Hey folks, John from Complete Technology Solutions, your friend in the computer business. So today, if you'll recall a couple weeks ago, I did a, a test on a solar battery charger. And believe it or not, that wasn't like a, done in a void. There was a reason. I was trying to find something that I could take in the field with me to charge up camera batteries whenever I'm doing remotes. And so therefore, I've been looking at a couple different power banks and all this. And you know, they, they range anywhere in price. You guys have seen them from $12 up to, you know, however much you want to spend. But let me show you the one we, uh, that might work for us. And the vendor swears they're awesome, but uh, you and I are going to find out together. Here we go. All right, guys. They're zeroed out, but that just burnt right into that platform. So this is, for those who don't know, Stronghold Legend. Time to make a pie. Here we go. What I wanted to do from the first time I opened up that VIC-20 and started banging out programs. So the guy, uh, the guy contacted me and said, look, I understand that you're looking for a solar charger, uh, but does it have to be solar? Can we just do something that's rechargeable if it's got enough power? And of course, I'm thinking, hey, fine with me. It doesn't necessarily have to be solar. He said, well, what if I sent you one of our chargers? All right, guys, listen. <laughs> If you look at these, the charge rate or the charge on them is 12,000 milliamp hours, 20,000 milliamp hours, you know, somewhere in that area. 900,000 milliamp hours. Okay, I'll wait for just a minute. Anybody out there buy that? Hear the crickets? I do. No, I can't buy that it's 900,000 milliamp hours. However, what did attract me was the look of this. Um, so if, as long as it's functional, I'm cool with that. But let me show Stumpy what we've got here. We've got the Intelligence Power Bank. And you'll notice that nowhere on here does it say anything about 900,000 milliamp hours, but it does on the ad. So here's what we're going to do. You guys know me well enough to know that when I test this stuff, I test it hard. So let's crack this thing open. Let's see what it looks like. Uh, first of all, packaging, it does have a little cord there. That's kind of nice. It's actually a vinyl cord. Let's unplug this, or excuse me, open this crack open this box let's see what we got in here now I have not taken a look at this yet I will tell you it's heavy guys it's got a lot of weight to it all right now we've got a charger cable these little rinky dink jobs I don't know why they don't put a little bit bigger one in there because there's nothing else in the box and nothing on the bottom here's the charger oh yeah guys look at that the back looks really nice Ooh, we get to peel it gotta love that new electronics ah new electronics peel all right, guys, so going around this thing, it is kind of thick. And to give you an idea, here's my thumb against it. You can see it's actually pretty thick. Uh, going around the sides here, it looks like we've got four outputs. We've got one charging port. We have a flashlight. Now, that was listed on the box here that it had a flashlight. It didn't say it, but there's a picture. Uh, and that's about it. you got your power button on the right-hand side. So uh, let me see if this is charged so we'll know. And it is not, but just out of curiosity, let me see if I can turn on our flashlight. There you go. So you press and hold the power, and that turns on your flashlight for you. And actually, it's a pretty bright little LED light. Not too bad at all. All right, so we're going to shut that off. And through the magic of cinematography, we're going to go ahead and charge this thing up. Here we go. And just like that, we're charged. Thought you'd like that. All right, so... We're gonna, when you hit the button one time, it brings up a battery meter here. And I hope Stumpy's getting that. It's a little bit dim. But as you can see right now, we are at 99% and there's no drain on it. So let's test this thing. Now we could test this with just one device or two devices or maybe a cell phone or maybe a light of some sort. I got a better idea. Let's test it with all of them at the same time and see if this thing actually starts anything up. So first... I used to have these cute little lights I'd use whenever I'd do things close up with Stumpy here. Little LED panels, but they just happen to be 5 volt USB. So I tell you what we're going to do. It doesn't tell me anywhere on here which one of these ports are 2.5 or 2.1 amps. However, I think ports 1 and 2 are 2.5. We're going to save those for something else. I'm going to plug this into port 4. And we're going to see if we can get some light out of this lamp. Oh, it did go live. So let's turn her on. Whoa! Okay, that's on. So I'm going to put that over there, and hopefully you guys will be able to see that. Golly, that's blinding. Let me close that down a little bit. All right, so we have one device connected 
we still have 99% and it's not moving. All right, so that's the easy device, right? It's an LED light. How hard can that possibly be? This, on the other hand, is the charger for my Sony CV-1 camera. And in case you guys missed that video, that is the best camera. I'm going to shoot a link up here for you so you can check out that camera. But I got three batteries on the charger here. That's what that is, a battery charger. Let's plug that in too, shall we? All right, so we're plugging her in. And we should see all three lights come on. And they are charging. Yes, all three are charging. So we're going to set that down. That light is blinding me. If you guys don't mind, I'm going to flip that over. Yeah, there you go. We'll look at it again in a minute. All right, so at this point, we've got two devices plugged in. We are holding steady at 99%. But I know what you're thinking. That's an LED, and that's a trickle charger for batteries. Can't be that bad, right? Well, I'll tell you what. Let's go all the way. Let's put a Raspberry B3 Plus on here. Now, you guys remember, these things pull some power. So let's go ahead. We're gonna honestly, guys. I don't expect this to start this up. If it does, great. But I'm gonna reposition Stumpy. I'm gonna stage over here so we can see the screen, and let's see if this thing even fires up. All right, guys. Here we go. So we're not gonna use this little cable that came with that because powering a Raspberry is a little bit more uh, power intensive than this little Mickey Mouse cable. However, we're gonna use a little bit thicker cable that's designed for nothing but power to this. All right. So we're going to go into port one. Now, from what I understand, out one and two are supposed to be 2.5 amp. And it's pretty easy to tell that with a Raspberry because when you run it with a Raspberry, if you're on anything less than 2.5, you're going to get the little lightning bolt at the top and an under voltage message. I am expecting that, especially since we are pulling voltage elsewhere. Incidentally, for those wondering, light is still on and this is still charging and I'll show Stumpy that. All right. so. Let's plug this in, guys. I have no idea what's about to happen. I right, stand back, see if it explodes. All right, plugging her in. And I have no switch on this, so all right, here we go. All right, it's powering up, guys. And we are still charging on the batteries. Do we get a screen? Wait for it. We got a screen. All right, so let me turn that down. All right, guys, so here's the deal. I'm going to let this go ahead and boot all the way into RetroPie. Uh, at this point, we've got our light still. We've got our battery still. And hopefully Stumpy's picking that up. And we've got the Raspberry running. Uh, looking at the power, we are at 97%. So whenever you start a new electric device, the first thing it does, obviously, is jolts it because it's pulling all that power to start it. So it takes more to start it than to run it continuously. Let's see what we get. Now, I am seeing the lightning bolt up here, and I'm hoping that Stumpy is actually seeing that. Um, yeah, right there. And I'll move him up a tad bit more so you can see it. There it is, right there. So that doesn't mean that it's not going to work. It just means that it is definitely drawing more than this is currently putting out amperage-wise. Um, once again, this is not abnormal. This is actually pretty normal for this product. So, all right. Three devices, everything's on, everything's going. Let's see if we get into our menu here. And there it is. We are into the menus. Now, is everything moving normally? Yes, it is. By the way, uh, I know you guys have seen me do different controller reviews. Um, I've got two more controllers we're going to review, and these little Sega copy things are one of them. So that's why you see that. You know that I hate corded controllers, but I promised I'd do a review on them, so you'll be seeing that one sooner than later. So, all right. Now, one thing about this. On this particular image, I do have a background audio track that's running. So when you run anything that has lower voltage like this, typically you'll hear this music slow down or cut out. And it is not slowing down or cutting out. So this is good. So once again, the system is on. We can navigate, everything is good. And we are at currently 96%. So we used 1% to get to this point. So everything is still running. As you can see, it's all good. I wonder what else I could do. Oh, you know what? I know what to do. Hold on. My darn cell phone is low. Golly, what are you going to do with a power bank if it's not to charge your cell phone, right? I mean, come on. Let's get realistic about this. All right, so let's plug this in. 
So now we are going to be using all four outputs. There we go. Yeah, sure. What do you think, guys? Do we do the iPhone? Do we do the Samsung? Let's do Samsung. Takes more voltage. All right. Plug that bad boy in. Plug it in so it stays in. There we go. And we are charging. Hopefully Stumpy can see our charge emblem. So, right now, phone charging. Battery's charging. Light is on. Raspberry is on. Just for fun, let's play a game for a second. Old school Galaga. Now, one thing about these controllers I don't like, a lot of you guys have actually seen the ones that I typically use on my game systems. Um, these don't have a start and a select. It's a Sega imitation. So you kind of have to use the mode button to do different things. It's a pain in the butt, but it's going to work. All right, so everything is still on, as you can see. All right, let's go ahead and... Once it does its little uh, splash screen thing here, by the way, guys. If you haven't seen this system, if you're in the Dallas-Fort Worth area, you're welcome to come by and take a look at this. I know a lot of the viewers actually are. In fact, if you look in the comments, you'll see people that was nice to meet you and that kind of thing. They come down here and meet me and actually see the studio live. It's pretty cool. So, uh, and I love that. So please do if you want to. All right, so let's add us a quarter. And start our game. And you'll notice we're getting no audio cut out. Now, I'm just going to play this for a second, and then I'll tell you what we're going to do. I will go ahead and I will launch the game that we all know does cause this to slow down, and we'll put a strain on this for sure. Hang on a second here. But as you can see, everything here is running perfectly. No problems at all. All right, so let's go back to our main menu. And we are taxing it, guys, because you can see we still have our power bolt up here. All right. The one that always cooks these things is Mortal Kombat. Always. So let's go into Mortal Kombat and let's see if we're getting audio cut out or drag or if we're getting uh, jittery effects and all that. And I, I would be willing to bet we are. So expect it, hope for the best. That's kind of where we're at. All right, loading into Mortal Kombat. And here we go. Add us some quarters and start our game. Turn up our volume so we can all hear it together here. And can you hear that? Audio's running a little behind. Says, yeah, slow, that's going down. Well, oh yeah, that sounds horrible. This is not even going to be playable, guys. But you know what? That's okay. We're going to give it a shot. Oh yeah, that's bad. You guys hear that? Yeah, that's not even playable. But you get the idea. And that's not the point. We're taxing the system. That's what we want. Sounds bad, right? All right. So let's bust out of there. Okay, so we know it'll run. It's not putting out... Whoop, that's a little loud. It's not putting out better than 2.5 amps. It's putting out 2.1 at the max, okay? However, it's not dropping anything, and that's what's really important here. It's actually functioning. So I tell you what, we're going to pull the Raspberry. By the way, never do what I just did. <laughs> on a Raspberry, always shut them down properly. I've got videos on that, too, if you're curious. So, all right, at this point, we still have our phone is charging. Our light is on, and we've got our... Cell phone batteries are still going. So, let's see what our voltage is. We are at 91%. So, on a massive draw, and I, that's a lot of draw right there, guys. More than you'll probably ever do if you're using it to charge your cell phone. It went down a grand total of about 7% with everything running and running some of the tougher games to run. Nothing wrong with that. Pretty good. So, let me get this cleaned up a minute here, and I'll give you my final thoughts on this pretty cool thing. Be right back. All right, guys, so final thoughts on this. So let me tell you, you know, when I heard about this, there's, okay, A, let's, let's eliminate the obvious. There's no way it's 900,000 milliamp hours. Based on the drainage rate of 7% over the time we used it, I'm betting this is probably around 18 to 22,000. Um, it's not bad. That's not bad at all. In, in fact, uh, for the price break, it's pretty darn good. And I really, really, really like this glass case, guys. It, it's really, it, it feels good. It's got some weight to it. And this glass front is just beautiful. 
Um, not to mention the fact that I like when you hit the button, it'll give you your battery readout, which is really, really neat too. If you hold the button, that's when you will get your flashlight to turn on, just like that. Pretty cool, right? Push and hold to turn it off again. So, it's a very cool thing. Um, I do wish it had a little bit bigger charging cable because I could see that warming up if you're charging that to full. But overall, that's my only real complaint. Uh, other than the fact that it's definitely not 900,000 milliamps. I mean, like a car battery over here or something. But at any rate, great product, guys. I'm going to shoot a link to this down in the description below if you want one. They're less than 20 bucks. Less than 20 bucks for that. And I guarantee you, it's going to charge whatever you got. I mean, it ran that Raspberry. If I'd run a Pi Zero, it would have run it probably for a week before it went dead. So really, they're great. They really are. All right, guys. Listen, thank you so much for watching. I hope you guys noticed. Look at the sub count. We are getting close to 1,000. And as promised, I've got a very special giveaway at 1,000 subs. Uh, guys, for me, it's a personal goal. I cannot thank you enough for watching the videos, for subscribing to the videos, and for the interaction. I love talking to you. I really do. And if you've met me in person, know that I have zero problem talking. That's what I love. So... Have a fantastic week and a great weekend, and I will see you soon. Bye-bye.